Hi everyone, welcome to our LinkedIn Live. I'm Felipe and I'm here with Sophie today. We're talking about how to scale social media learning for your employees, which Sophie is probably one of the most frequently asked questions here at Tribal, right? It's one of the, the challenges that we hear across industries, regions, and different states of maturity. So what are some of those challenges that, that you usually hear from, from customers and from our peers? Um, so we find that companies, they already know the value in um, employees being active on social. So they've already, they're already investing in certain programs. You know, they know that they don't want, to, they don't just want their employees to kind of just be sharing or reposting content. They really want them engaging authentically, um, generating their own content um, become becoming thought leaders themselves. And so they're already, we find that they already focus and invest in um, smaller programs. So they might have a, an ambassador training program or they might um, focus on training their SLT, their senior leadership team, or they might run a social selling program with a small sales team. Um, and they're, they're, they're finding such brilliant results with this and they're really seeing the value that this brings. So now they're asking us, but how do we replicate that success? You know, how do we scale that up so that everybody can become um, a, a thought leader, an influential expert, or even just become active or more active um, on social? Um, and so they're, they're facing a few challenges with achieving that challenge. You know, as, as I say, there's huge numbers of employees to train. So geographically, that can be an issue. Um, also, logistically, you know, they're not all necessarily desk based. Um, there's companies don't all necessarily have the expertise in house to do this. So, um, you know, they are looking for support. Um, uh, there's a high cost of doing it, of course, especially if you're looking at the programs that they're running, maybe webinars or or, you know, and one to one sessions with their execs. Um, you can't do that at scale. So there's that would be just too much of a cost. And even employees themselves, you know, um, I mean, you've mentioned this to me before, that there's this kind of real webinar fatigue um, since the pandemic. People are just like, oh, no, not another one, you know, an hour long training session um, or especially when it's training that isn't necessarily um, exactly at where they want to be or it's not necessarily exactly what they want to be trained on. It might not be their area of interest. And so, you know, employees themselves, there's a bit of pushback there. So, but the biggest challenge that we see with um, companies actually is that with, with all of the challenges I've just mentioned is that they've got employees at all different levels. Mm -hmm. So they've got employees who, you know, we have this, the analogy at Tribal of this kind of this mountain and you've got the ones at the top of the mountain. So like the ones that, that they're already maybe investing in training who are already um, generating their own content, um, creating their own photographs, their own videos, their own their own thoughts. Um, and then if there's the ones that are more at the base of the mountain who haven't yet quite got active or, you know, they haven't yet grown their network or they just don't yet know, they don't yet have the confidence to step on, to, to start climbing that mountain. Um, and so we're really finding that um, employees have, have this challenge, uh, cust uh, our customers have this challenge of trying to um, train everybody, but with all these different levels of, of skill. Mm -hmm. And it's not just levels of skill, but also levels of, of confidence um, and sometimes maybe motivation because it might not be part, you know, part of their job role as such. Um, or it might they might they might not feel like it's something they want to do or something they need to do. So they might not um, be interested in get in doing it. So it's kind of finding a way of um, bringing the skills and the confidence and also the motivation, the drive, like showing the value to all of those different people you know, really helping them to kind of change habits and change behaviours, um, which can be a real challenge for companies. Uh, and also maybe the reporting side of that as well can be a bit difficult, like measuring the success of that or um, employees themselves tracking their own progress or programme managers. You know, how do you, how do you manage all of that? Yeah, no, that's a really interesting point. I think that Sometimes as a program manager, it might be your first impulse to just create more training, right? The response is always to create more. But rather than creating more, you need to create something that is more meaningful and relevant to those stages, right? I think you touched on something really interesting, which is people learn in different ways and they have different motivations. Not everyone will become an influencer and we don't expect them to be, right? That's not the goal. What we're trying to do is to build their confidence and 
becoming content creators and sharing the knowledge on social media, promoting their expertise, also promoting the company, helping you to expand into new markets and really be able to showcase what you do as a company, but also as an employer. And I think that such an important part of that step is to take the step back and analyze the level of social activity that you use as your employees have today, right? So how many employees do I have that are currently active on LinkedIn? How many of these are executives? How many of these are salespeople and marketing people or technical experts? What is the snapshot of my organization today? And what is the ambition for my organization in six months from now, in a year from now? Because that helps you to find what the gap is, right? So how do I engage these groups, creating training that is meaningful for the roles in the organization, but also for the level of social maturity that they have today? So that six months from now, in the future, one year from now, two years from now, when you already have developed a training framework for your organization, then what you can do is that you can use the data that you're getting from which topics are people going for more? Well, are they going for more professionalization? Are they going for networking? Are they more interested in content creation? Are they specific on are they interested specifically on a social network or a specific behavior? You can use that data to find gaps, but also to understand where the appetite is, and then you can encourage users to use that more. Yeah, yeah. And it's helpful when each each training comes with its own suggestion or metrics for measuring, you know, how, how that then worked for them um, mm. and measuring their own success in terms of that particular training. Um, yeah. So if each if each course comes with um, metrics that can guide you as an individual, as well as, you know, the program manager, then having uh, some reporting and some support in terms of managing the whole program, you know, the program as a whole, because we know our customers when we do smaller trainings with them, um, there's, you know, we're able to report on individually the status of employees and, and their level of social maturity. We can measure their improvement over time and also the wider factors for the company in terms of, you know, did this program lead to more pipeline or did it lead to more, um, more leads or did it did it lead to more engagement with this post or more people at your event so those kinds of metrics are quite hard to know how to implement when it's at, at such a big scale because we know how to do it when it's a small group right mm -hmm. so like if it's a seen an slt program or a sales program we've got really specific metrics but it's much more difficult i think for them to measure roi or just track progress when it's such a big group of people that's right and then by being able to observe those behaviors of who's completing what, who's requesting from what, what kind of feedback they're providing about those courses, about those learnings, then you can create more, right? Rather than just coming from us, it's coming from the community. And it also creates the sense of like, they feel heard. They feel like the, the questions, their requests are being taken into consideration. So they also feel like they're building this with you. Not It's not just something that they are just expected to complete. One of the things that I keep seeing the most is that seeing social media enablement as a checkbox exercise, it's something that just doesn't work. This is, I know, yeah. I feel like we need to resist the temptation of just seeing this as kind of like a social media awareness, right? So social media policy, do's and don'ts, this is how you use your profile, this is why you how you share content, we don't talk about this. And we need to come from a place where we're showing social media as a place of opportunity for them to, to really tap into those motivations that really makes people feel like they want to be a part of this. And I think that this is where providing training that is multimedia is so important that just going beyond, you know, those all the learnings where you're clicking, 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 click, complete, click, 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 complete. Right, we need to use all of the resources that we have available now. We need to use videos, we need to use audios, we need to provide guides that people can then take away and see, okay, I've learned this course, this is how I can apply this to my profile, to my content strategy. Because this is how they are navigating through content online, right? Like this is how people are learning on, on YouTube, this is how they are researching for content on Google or using AI, ChatGPT to learn. And if your e-learning, if your gamified learning learning approach is just a checkbox exercise, just a sequence of clicks that someone needs to go through, 
that's not really going to encourage them to change their behavior and to feel like they're part of this community. Yeah, especially with this topic level, because it's not really, I mean, there is, there's theory behind it, but it's not, it's not theory you're learning, you know, you really need to learn practically, you know, your habits need to change, your, your, your behavior changes. And um, it's not really until you do it either that you, that you kind of see the rewards. So these, I think one thing we mentioned that, you know, they're, they're bored of long, people are just bored of long webinars, but small Mm -hmm. bite size um courses where you can just specifically achieve a skill or like learn a new a new behavior on one topic you know learn how to create great photos with your phone that you can share and how to share or learn how i don't know learn how to optimize your profile because you're getting started or how do i grow my neck these little specific habits are they're 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 really much more easily achieved if you've got bite size learnings to learn how to do them and then as I've mentioned you know how did I then check whether that whether I'm doing it right whether I, whether it worked um I think yeah th- this sort of format really it, it's really applicable for this particular topic I think it's how people want to learn um, and also not not having like a prescribed path that you have to follow it's quite nice to be able to dip in and out and choose the topic that you want to learn more about because this is you know this is very much I think, as you said, we don't, no one's expecting everyone to become an influencer and, you know, a, a, an expert or a thought leader necessarily. But everybody can just be, you know, if you, if we meet people where they are today, then they can at least be a little bit more than they were today, tomorrow, or doing a little bit more tomorrow um, without necessarily having to be doing what, doing, you know, being an ambassador. But these little bite-sized programs help them to just creep up the mountain, you know, step by step, um, which I think is really, um, it's not daunting. And it's really, it really helps you to actually see success because it's a small step and everybody can make small steps. Yeah, I find it really, really interesting when we get to see how changes that are happening in other types of media affect how we work and how we how we train our people and how we train our customers and how we work with them. So for example, in the past, if you wanted to watch a TV show, you had to turn in the TV at that very specific time so that you can then watch your friends at 6 p.m., right? So so that you can watch that very specific show. But we have moved on from that, right? Now, when you watch, when when I watch something, you just open Netflix or Max or Amazon Prime or whatever you're using, and then you watch it and then you switch back right? So you feel yeah. like you are in control of what you want to see or what you want to learn. And the same thing is happening with the use of AI, right? Like in the past, you wanted to know a little bit more about a topic. You have to Google it. You're looking for the best source for that. Then you go through three or four websites. They all have different versions of the truth. And then you choose the one that you think like speaks the most to you or that seems to be most complete or that, that you trust. With ChatGPT, we want to go straight into the topic. We want to go straight into the answer. So that's something to bear in consideration as well when you're providing training, that we're past that time where someone just wants to watch a series of masterclasses to then understand how to update the banner on their LinkedIn profile or Mm. how to find the best hashtags for, for their LinkedIn post. They want to go straight into that. They want to be able to search and find that answer. They want to be able to search and find that behavior that they need to incorporate into their daily activity. So you need to shorten kind of like those paths from what people are today into what they need to learn. Because otherwise, you're not really speaking to how fast these things have changed. And and another thing just take into consideration as well is that like social media is just changing all the time. Every day there's something yeah. new. LinkedIn with X, with another platform, there's a change in the algorithm, there's a new resource on LinkedIn that you should explore, there's a new thing that you should test, that if your training is too static and is not changing, you're not going to be able to capture that. And then it's going to be get outdated very quickly. So this is why being able to provide this in a platform that is scalable and that incorporates all of your employees or as many employees as you can, it becomes a bit easier to manage that and deploy that to different regions. Yeah. And I think that you've, uh, you know, suggested this, but really 
assessing where you are, where people are today, I think is the first step really, isn't it? Because knowing where, where people start, then they know where, because you said that people want, they don't want to sit through something that's, you know, for, for a long time, but they, in order to find that sweet spot of where to start, you really have to see where people already are because you don't want to sit through beginners modules when you're already very advanced. And if you're already, if you're not doing very much yet, and then you're just starting your journey, watching something that's telling you how to become, you know, a, a, a big sharer or something, you know, it's just not going to resonate with you at that at that early stage. So I think it's really important to be able to, be able to assess, to help program managers, to be able to assess um, where people are today and then offer them the training that can meet them there. Um, and I know that like a few weeks ago, we talked about the importance of, kind of like tying whatever you do when it comes to social media activation to business metrics so that is you can show the impact that it has in the organization as a whole so that you can continue to grow, it can continue to scale, and it can continue to invest. But we also know the challenges of being able to connect this to CRM tools that you're using or social listening or connecting this to you know your HR platform so that you're tying this back to cost per hire, how many interviews you're doing, how many, you know, um, talent retention as well. So this is yet another metric that you can have internally so that you can map your team. Once you have everyone in the same program in the same learning framework, you get to see then, okay, I have these many employees, this number of employees, they are sitting under this box in terms of their behavior. This number of employees are producing content content consistently. And then what you can do not only to show how the training that you're providing, the learning that you're providing is helping them to evolve over time so that they become more confident, but also you can tap into different pockets of those groups that are ready for more. So then if I get to see that I have 15, 20, 25 people, then are constantly exploring those content creation topics. They are constantly uh, completing those courses or coming back for the guides, coming back for the audios, or they're requesting for more topics. These are my people that are ready for me to invest uh, and help them to create more content, right? We can help them to create more videos. We can support them with creating maybe an ebook, maybe creating long form of content blogs. So it helps you to understand which groups are ready for more, not just the ones that are kind of like moving from inactive to being relatively active, but those ones that can have more support from the organization so that it can become your top performance and help you to build a success story so that more people can follow. Yeah, because employees are always looking for their next kind of wave of ambassadors. And so I suppose having it, you know, in, a, in this kind of a program, it really helps them to identify those those key next contenders who are going to be the ones to watch out for. Um, because sometimes they just don't even know it, that, pe that, that you know, companies don't realise how much um, people, people might be contributing, might be active, um, and they could really be benefiting the organisation as a whole. Um, so these kinds of, so offering this at scale is not only helping to empower people who we just didn't know had it in them in, in some ways, um, but yeah, helping you identify it because you're seeing, you know, because because we're measuring it, we're actually, you can see their progress over time. So we can yeah. like really identify these stars. Yeah, I really see that like some of the, the key parts of being able to do this at scale or preparing yourself so that you can do this at scale is that the first one is having a clear act, act, um, snapshot of where you are today. So how, how many active people, how many active employees do I have in my organization today that are sharing on LinkedIn or that have shared in the last 30 days, in the last 60 days? And then you look into the, the different levels of the organization as well. That will give you kind of a map of where you are and you can then set the ambition for where you want to be. But I think you touched on something really important, which is continue to giving, giving them those nuggets of kind of like rewarding, right? This is why it's so important to gamify this approach so that you are providing certifications, you are creating a sense of community so that not only they are learning from your framework, but also they are learning from each other, celebrating the success story so that you're bringing that to the community so that people can see, yes, this works, it has worked for someone else, it might work for me, 
this is a case study, this is a success story that I can learn from so that I can continue doing more of what I'm doing. And also listening to them when it comes to getting the feedback, right? Being honest about getting their honest feedback about the content and whether it works or it doesn't work, whether it's too detailed or it's not detailed enough and being able to incorporate that into their learning path. So I think that when I think about those points is really all based on data. I think it's all, whether that's data based on the level of social activity or data that is based on the, the topics that people are taking in the platform or the reviews, the feedback that you get from people, that's so important for you to, to enable you to make the right decisions for the program. Yeah, yes, because we can be quite dynamic with it and um, really, really adapt it depending on user needs. And I mean, the only success is if people use it. And so, you know, if you're listening and really delivering what people want, then everybody, everybody wins in the end. Yeah. And I think that like, when you're thinking about scalability as well, is also creating this in a way that you can think about how does this work across different regions, right? So, so that you don't create content that is too relevant for one specific region, but it doesn't work for another one. So that's something to bear in consideration as well. Thinking about having a clear setup so that you can incorporate languages in the future as well, if you have to, right? Like people will always learn best if they can read this in their own language, right? Like it's the best way to connect to them, to connect to their emotions and connect to their motivations. So this is something that we need to bear in mind as well. And it's just, it can be really cost intensive to provide webinars, one in English, another one in German, another one in French, or even providing webinars in English, but you do one in the morning, another one in the afternoon, because you're running that for one group that is in the US, another group that is in Europe, so we know that for some topics, you do need that long form of content because you need to cover those topics in more detail. You need to be able to prefer questions and it needs to almost, almost like a coach-like approach to that topic. But when we're talking about these micro topics, like how to find, how to find hashtags for, for your LinkedIn post, how to create your first blog, how to have more, you know, like how to have a better uh, content strategy and incorporate, you know, more topics into your content strategy. Those ones, like are the ones that people just want to go straight into the topic and be able to learn that. Yeah, but people also have, because they have different learning styles as well. So, you know, one trainer once said, oh, you know, sometimes I use, I'll use those e-learnings to um, get like, like almost like a prep before a webinar that will bring it all together. So they might be like, oh, you know, this would be your homework. And then the webinar might consolidate five or six points, like getting you set up, for example. So you mm -hmm. might go through the um, the activities and the actual, the behavior it will change or the actual practical tasks. And then in the webinar, you can focus on um, any issues or um, more of a discussion point rather than waste that time doing practical things that and e-learning can easily teach you. So I think that the different learning styles are, are quite well addressed by having a little bit of a combination of yeah. e-learning, you know, bite-size e-learnings, and then occasionally a webinar training that's very, you know, much more about going at that little bit deeper or consolidating yeah. learning. Yeah, I think you're right, because I'm thinking about my own learning style, because I like to learn... I love audios, right? Like I listen to a lot of podcasts. So I love to hear like a training session that I don't need to sit in front of my screen and visually watch that, but I'm yeah. hearing the thoughts, I'm hearing the insights while I'm washing the dishes and doing something. I'm, yeah. I'm paying attention to this. But I also love a training session where you have a trainer and you can ask questions, right? Right there and then, and then you get, you get the information that you need or that you get to exchange some ideas with other people that are in the room as well. So I think it goes back to, like you said, being able to tap into the different learning styles that you might require mm -hmm. for learning a certain, to uh, a certain topic. And that might change from person to person, but it might change from topic to topic. Yeah. Well, sometimes it's just the reassurance that you need, that you're on the right track, um, that yeah, that's what we meant. That's what that's all you need. Yeah, that's all it was. And then it gives you that kind of confidence. Because um, I, I do think a lot of this, a lot, a lot of with all of these, a lot of these topics, 
not all of them, but a lot of them, it's, it is confidence. It's like knowing, or, or sometimes it's being told something that you, is. It, it might seem obvious once you know, but you just needed to be told. And um, yeah, I think sometimes with the, with the webinar sessions, you're able to kind of ask a little bit more and, yeah. um, and just get that, yeah, get that reassurance that, yeah, I was doing it right. And then it gives you that boost to, to give, it a, give it a go in real life. Yeah, and uh, I mean, social media is so experimental, right? Like, I mean, that that are best practices when it comes to to creating content, best times to post, how long should I should my post be? How can I incorporate a content strategy using hashtags? All of those things, but the algorithm is always changing. The algorithm is always learning based on what we do and what we share, right? But also on what the platform wants to be. If you think about it, a year ago. LinkedIn wasn't as you know geared towards video as it is today. And that happened because of TikTok. It didn't happen because of LinkedIn. Mm. So something that happens in another platform, in another channel, in another media gets to influence what happens on LinkedIn. So who knows what's going to change next? So it's interesting for us to always try to stay up to date with what's happening on LinkedIn but also outside of LinkedIn. LinkedIn is, it is the main B2B platform for us to exchange ideas and connect with other people in, in across different industries. But when you're thinking about society and training and we need to keep an eye on for like what's happening on TikTok, what's happening on X, what's happening in other areas, a little bit of pop culture sometimes and all of those things so that you can start incorporating that into the style that you're you're helping people to, to learn from. Yeah, that's really important because I think that's why it has to be so dynamic. The the you know the whole any any training that you're offering actually, especially on but on this kind of topic, it has to be really dynamic, change, keeping up to date with yeah, not just changes of the of the platform, but changes of trends and behaviors because it's just because the platform might be one way, people are, but people are all doing this. Yeah. Um, so it's keeping up to date with that. And, re and and that's where you said, you know, really listening to feedback from the users. Like, what do they say? What's really happening? Um, yeah. I agree. So just to summarize the conversation that we had so far, it's very important that to resist that temptation of if I'm going to scale, I'm just going to create more training or I'm going to create one training framework and just scale the same thing to everyone. It's important to... Have a clear snapshot of where your organization is today in terms of the level of social activity of our employees. Understand that also on a seniority level and a group level so that you are capturing that from the start. And then thinking about the learning paths and the objectives that you have as an organization. Do I want to promote people to create more content? Do I want to support people to develop their networks or focus on their profile optimizations? Maybe all of the above. How can I create a framework that can incorporate all of those touch points and covering different levels of social media maturity so that I'm not providing training that is too advanced or too basic? And then you keep an eye on that data so that you can always tweak the content that you have, create new learning paths, or create a new training material and update this as well. Uh, but also bear in mind that it's important to develop that sense of community, gamify your approach, Make sure that people get a sense of reward by completing that content and they get to share those experiences with, them, with, with each other and build on the success that they build as a team and using the data that you get from user behavior, from completion of courses and from user feedback to continuously improve the framework, framework that you have in your organization. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> So thank you everyone so much for joining today. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, feel free to connect with Sophie and myself. We'll be happy to continue this conversation with you. Thank you so much for attending today and I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye, thank you. Bye.